Hey, welcome back to the Cop Kitchen. I'm Dave Sheppy. And I want to thank everybody again for subscribing and hitting the like button and the comments. Thanks very much. Keep it up. So today I'm going to make a recipe that I haven't made in quite some time. Uh, a while ago, a few years ago, I made a lot of this for Christmas gifts. And that is English butter toffee. A nice crunchy but still smooth type of toffee. It'll be topped with a dark chocolate and some ground almonds. Very, very yummy. You could also top it with other things, pecans or coconut even, but I'll get to that later. Right now, let me get into my apron. There we go. Now, without any further ado, let me tell you what you're gonna need to make this yummy candy. Here it is. So what you'll need to make this yummy toffee is two and two thirds cups of white sugar, one third of a cup, five tablespoons of water, one quarter cup of corn syrup, light corn syrup. And I'll show you how I get it to come out of the measuring cup really, really easy. Um, I put a teaspoon to close to a tablespoon of vanilla and four sticks or two cups of butter, salted, unsalted. I didn't have unsalted, this is salted. And also uh, one cup of, I have the dark chocolate uh, chips. You can use milk chocolate, I suppose butterscotch, um, semi-sweet, anything that you want as far as the chocolate is concerned. And then I have one cup, more or less, of ground, finely ground almonds. And a couple other things you're going to need, because this is actually a candy, so what you'll need is a candy thermometer. Now there are types like this, very inexpensive, that you can get at the big box store. That'll help you out. We're gonna go to a hard crack on this, hard crack candy. Um, there's also this one here, which is has a little uh, slidey clip on the back, so that when you put it on the side of your uh, pot, um, you can adjust the height. And that's uh, made by Taylor. I also have another one here. This is a geeky, because I'm a geek, geeky, geeky digital thermometer, candy thermometer. Also has a sliding clip. It also points out a little bit from the uh, side of the pan so that it gets in the center closer. Now, just keep in mind, you do not want the tip of your thermometer to touch the bottom of the pan. You won't get an accurate reading. So, with that said, let's start putting it together. Now, I'm going to put the butter in first. And again, I'm just going to dump the butter right in there, all of it. And you can dump the sugar in. The vanilla will go last. Actually, the vanilla will go when it comes off the stove. I want somebody to please yell at me because if you don't yell at me, more than likely I'll do one of two things. I'll forget to put the vanilla in or I'll spill it all over the place. The water helps to um, melt the sugar. That's what we're, we're doing here. Now, for the corn syrup, the light corn syrup, I. Uh, I like to spray either your measuring spoon or the cup with a non-stick spray. Just a real quick shot with it. Boom, like that. The corn syrup in. And it will pour out and not leave anything in the spoon, in the uh, measuring cup. All right, so now 
We'll go to the stove with it and we'll cook it on a medium high heat. Once the butter is melted, we're gonna melt it at a, a low heat first, I should have said, until the butter is really melted. And then we'll crank the heat up a little bit. Uh, we'll stir it only a couple times and then we let it go until the temperature on your candy thermometer gets to 300 degrees. 300, don't go much over 300 or you'll burn it and it won't taste good. So 300 degrees, we'll take it off. You'll yell at me to put the vanilla in and then we will pour it onto a cookie sheet. You can lightly spray the cookie sheet with some cooking spray, just really lightly. And I'll show you what to do from there. So to the stove we go. Okay, so I've got it on a low heat and we're just gonna let the butter melt and the sugar melt get all incorporated in nice and smooth. And then we'll turn the heat up. We'll add the candy thermometer. And you notice that I am using a wooden spoon. You can either use a wooden spoon or use a rubber type of a uh, spatula type thing. Don't use metal. It doesn't react well with the sugar and it will crystallize. I also cut my butter into little one tablespoon squares, if you will, and it just helps them melt a little faster. Once all the butter is melted, like it almost is now. Just let it go for a little longer just to dissolve uh, some more of the sugar under the low medium heat. Once we start seeing it bubbling uh, around the sides, then we'll be able to increase the heat. Also, if you notice some crystallization going on around the rim, uh, just above the um, liquid, take a little pastry brush like this with just a little bit of water on it. And you can go around and just get that those crystals off so it doesn't mix in with your toffee mixture. indicator is that we need to turn the heat off. We will take our thermometer out. Okay, so you remembered to tell me to put the vanilla in. It's going to spit and sputter. Stir it in real quick. Oh, that smells good. Then it goes right on your pan. Do not, if it has anything on the bottom, don't scrape the bottom. You'll just get little bits of charred stuff that won't taste good. So just level it out. Shaking out a little bit. And we'll let it sit for a little bit, just a minute or so, and then we'll top it with some dark chocolate chocolate chips that doesn't take very long and then we'll spread it out if you put the chocolate chips on too soon it's still very very hot and liquidy they'll just sink and you won't, they won't melt on the top so you need to get them to melt on the top and then we'll sprinkle some of the ground up almonds on there and then we'll let it sit to come to room temperature and then we'll break it into pieces and see how it taste maybe
Spread that chocolate out nice and even across the top. Doesn't take very long for that chocolate to melt. This, if you're doing this with the kids, um, be really, really careful because when that toffee comes off the stove, it is extremely hot. So you might want to take care of that yourself. Um, speaking from experience, it is hot and does burn. So be very careful. And they can help spread the chocolate chips on or the almonds on. And if you're interested in the apron I'm wearing or the mug and some other things with my logo on it, I will have a link down into my zazzle.com store and you can pick one up for yourself and maybe send me a picture of you wearing it. Hey. That'd be cool. So after that, the almond, I call it almond dust. Now I gotta tell you the truth, uh, all transparency and all that stuff. Um, this is not toasted almonds. These are just regular unsalted almonds that I put on the top. I just put it right on the pan, which might be problematic when we go to break it up. You can put parchment paper on there and put the parchment paper out over the edges so when you put the toffee on, you'll have something to lift out and break it. Eh, we'll see how it goes. I think if I give it a good smack, it might break into pieces or I'll bend the heck out of my pan trying to get it out. We'll see, but we gotta let it cool completely. I let it cool a little bit on the counter and I'm not gonna lie to you again. I sometimes stick it in the refrigerator and let it sit in there because I can't wait sometimes. So I'll be back. So before I forget, to clean your pot, put some water in it. Bring the water to a boil and that'll melt all the toffee that's stuck all over the place and on your spoon, I suppose you could lick it clean, but that wouldn't be healthy. Put water in it. Don't forget your thermometer, your candy thermometer. Stick that in there too, so you get all the toffee off. <laughs> okay, so I just took it out of the refrigerator. The toffee looks good just like that and it is cold and the way you can do this is you can pop it out of here and break it or you can cut it into pieces like so and then just break it up into whatever size you want that's pretty good size oh. That looks perfect. And it. Oh, then it'll snap nice and crunchy. That came out perfect. Look at these pieces. Look at that. Look at how that brown, like I said, almost a little browner than a peanut butter. Very nice. You can uh, break this in so many different ways. Uh, you can leave nice big pieces, smaller pieces. Again, you can try to cut it into squares if you'd like without cutting your fingers off. It's like I got all mine. And you can make those squares. Now, you, this is a fairly thick piece. Uh, if you put it in there, this is a 13 by 9, I didn't mention that, pan. You can put it into 11 by 14, I think is the next size up or something like that, and make the toffee a little thinner. I like it this way. And maybe I'll just try a little tiny, tiny piece. Oh, sweet mother of pearl. That came out perfect. It's not too sweet. 
It has a smooth crunch, if that even makes sense. If you've ever had a Squares bar, candy bar, for those of you who can get that, that's exactly what it tastes like. That kind of toffee. So like I said, I'm gonna make another batch, probably thinner than this batch, uh, and not put any chocolate on it. And, <clears throat> or almonds. <clears throat> and I'm gonna uh, make a blonde brownie and it's gonna have just the pieces of the homemade toffee in the blonde brownie with, uh, like I said, it's gonna be made with brown butter, which is kind of cool to make. So that's on an upcoming video. Another video that I have coming up will be whoopie pies, um, jitterbug sandwiches, if you don't know what those are, um, you'll learn something my mom used to make. If there's a recipe that you would like me to attempt, again, if you're first responder or an officer, you know, or if you're not, send me and I'll, uh, I'll try to make it. So just take all of your toffee and, oh man, this looks, this is the best batch I've had in a long time. Um, I like this. And there's definitely plenty here. Maybe I'll just try another little piece. I'm a diabetic, so I gotta be careful. One little piece ain't gonna hurt you. I don't think. I mean, I think if you're doing this with the kids, they're gonna love the breaking up part. Breaking this up. Again, great Christmas present, birthday, parties. Put this in a tin. And it'll be awesome. A couple more breaks here. You know what else you can do is not put anything on the top. Don't put any almonds. Just have the toffee and then melt some chocolate and dunk this into chocolate and then put your coconut or whatever on it and then plate it that way. Bigger pieces. That'd be awesome. All right. So there you have it. This is homemade English butter toffee. And if I must say so myself, this batch came out perfect. <laughs> so much of it. Yeah, that's a diabetic's nightmare right there. <laughs> I'm in a coma tomorrow. You know, I had some more pieces. <laughs> I'm not going to eat anymore. I promise. All right, maybe just one more. All right, look at that. All kinds of English butter toffee. Sweet, crunchy, chocolate, almonds. So, thanks for watching the video. Um, again, hit the subscribe, hit the like, make a comment, try this recipe. Leave me a message in the comment section about how your batch came out. It's important to be at 300 degrees. Uh, follow the directions and you'll come out with a perfect toffee also. So until next time, again, in the <laughs> plug for myself, in the description, I am going to have a link to where you can get some of these nifty products with my logo on it. Help the old man out, right? So until next time, be safe out there. I'm 10-7. <laughs>